general relativity, step by step. Last time I showed that we only needed this rather special restriction of the riemann christoffel curvature tensor in order to figure out the tidal acceleration induced by a gravitational wave. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate, well, I'll, I'll see how this one goes. And if I can do this one easily, that's great. Uh, and I might have a bash at this one. And if, if this is too hard, then I'll just give up and use a numerical system, use, use an algebra system. Okay, so what have we got? We've got our metric tensor mu nu was equal to minus one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one. That's eta plus something small times this A matrix here. Alpha, beta, oh no, that's beta and that's minus alpha, times uh, e to the i minus omega t plus omega z. So we're going to consider the Christoffel symbols, and you'll recall that the Christoffel symbols are just derivatives of the metric tensor. So that means that I can basically ignore this because it's a constant. That's nice, so we just consider that term there. Uh, and I'll probably get rid of the epsilons as well, but, you know, probably get rid of the epsilons as well. Okay, so we're left with the problem of evaluating that. Yeah, sometimes I'll write zero, and sometimes I'll write t for time. Let me put t in instead. Let me put t in for that. Let me just pinch in a little bit. Alpha, t, t. Sometimes I'll put zero for the time coordinate. Sometimes I'll write it explicitly. So I want to evaluate that. What What is this beast here? Well, let's get the definition. Beta gamma equals a half g alpha pi di g d d di di plus di g d d di g d minus di g blah blah by di x b. Uh, okay, so that's something over pi, which goes in the first place, it goes in the second place, it goes in the bottom. We've got beta and a gamma. We've got a beta and a gamma. We've got a beta down there and a gamma up there. We've got a beta and a gamma there and there. However, I'm going to consider the case where beta equals gamma equals... T I may as well write it out as t for time. Equals a half g alpha's free. Ah, because I'm considering... I had to think a little bit there. Because because we're only oh, this there we go. because this is only to first order, I'm going to replace it with an e to the flat space one. Yes, I ignored it, but yeah, I, I can ignore this in terms of the derivatives, but not in not in the absolute uh, calculation of the of the of the, Riemann, of the Christoffel symbol. Uh, so that tells me we've got alpha alpha because that tells me. Because this is diagonal, we know that pi also equals alpha times di g, and I'm doing quite a lot of work here, pi was equal to alpha, beta and gamma were both t, t by di t, plus g gamma, oh that was t as well, wasn't it? Di g gamma was equal to t, pi was equal to alpha by di t minus di g beta was equal to t gamma was equal to t by di alpha well that looks quite formidable but it's not as bad as it might seem if i get my red pen out i can do a little bit of cancelling here this term here is equal to zero why because it's that term there, which is zero, so it doesn't change. So it's constant, and it has a zero derivative. Uh, what else have I got left here? Um, yeah, let me just... Oh, I don't quite understand what happened there. Just a minute. It's very easy to press the wrong things with these. Okay, so what have I got left now? Uh, let me rephrase. I'll go back to black. Oh, that's... Oh, it's happened again. Let me try that again. I wanted to hit that button there. There we go. 
turned it to black. Right, we've got two identical things here because the metric tensor is uh, symmetric. And we now have eta alpha alpha times di g alpha t by di t equals what? Um, oh, well, it's going to be equal zero, isn't it? Why is that? It's because the time row, which is the first row, or the zeroth row, I guess, is equal to zero. And because there's a time... Yeah, yeah, it's it's symmetrical, so it's just equal to zero because there's no this this row and this column of the metric tensor are unchanging with respect to time because I'm multiplying them by zero. So that tells us altogether that the Christoffel symbol of alpha t t equals zero. Well, that's nice. So that tells me that this term here equals zero. That's wonderful. So let me write down what we've got so far. I can cross, let me zoom in a little bit on this, I can cross that term out and it equals zero. The Christoffel symbol itself is zero, let alone its derivative. So now we have a d by dt of this term here, which doesn't look quite as easy. Let me just copy that one out a bit lower down and I'll do it in the next, uh, I'll do it in the next screencast. I'll move over here. We need minus r alpha 0 nu 0 equals di by di t, Christoffel symbol, alpha 0 nu. And I'll do that in the next screencast. We need to work out that to calculate the tidal acceleration as a result of a gravitational wave passing. And I'm going to stop there. Stop.